what is up guys welcome back to the channel and to another roundup episode keeping you up to date on all the latest news and rumors in professional wrestling and before we get right to it you guys already know make sure to oh boy drop that like and turn on those notifications if you haven't just yet to be fully up to date on all the latest and to not miss any of the upcoming uploads nonetheless let's get right to it with this roundup and i want to start off with an update to a story that we have been covering over the last couple of videos and that is in regards to Daniel Bryan and his WrestleMania 35 opponent which seems to be changing a lot because of everything that is happening on television so WrestleMania 35 is just on the horizon and only two matches has been announced so far which is Brock Lesnar taking on Seth Rollins and Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte which we know is gonna have Becky Lynch added into it sometime around the next couple of weeks and as we head into Mania the other next big match is of course for the WWE WWE Championship so one of the biggest question is who is Daniel Bryan going to face at the big event because we do know that he's gonna face Kofi Kingston at Fastlane and one name that has been floating around is Kevin Owens the former Universal Champion has been out of action since October after getting surgery on both knees but has been posting video updates on a weekly basis telling fans he'll be back in the near future and according to Bleacher Report Kevin Owens will step up to the challenge for Daniel Bryan with his new babyface persona. The reports indicated the following, yeah Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston is scheduled for Fastlane while a company source told me on Tuesday evening that Daniel Bryan's Wrestlemania opponent will be Kevin Owens. Those videos of Kevin Owens hanging out with his family and eating bad food make a lot much more sense now. And it is also worth mentioning that although Kevin Owens is part of the Monday Night Raw roster, in his video he has indicated that he cannot wait to get back into the ring wherever it is that they haven't returned in either Raw or SmackDown so he's already hinting at the fact that he could end up on SmackDown Live instead of Raw and to add to all of this a Twitter account WrestleVotes who as you guys know it's one of the most reliable sources at the moment indicated the following we asked about the Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens Wrestlemania rumors and information got back to us indicating that those rumors are true however However, nothing is set in stone. This wave of momentum that Kofi Kingston is on could still shake things up. One source I talked to said, don't be shocked if we still end up getting another Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston title match at WrestleMania. So anything is possible as of right now, but a lot of sources are indicating that it could be Kevin Owens. That is three different reports, adding the one coming from Wrestling Observer Radio, indicating that we could be seeing the beer versus Kevin Owens at the big event that of course put it into question what is going to be happening with Kofi Kingston at Wrestlemania and I'm just hoping that WWE ends up having something big for him or even get him added into that WWE match and make it a multi-man match there's also the possibility of a United States Championship match because after all we haven't seen the champion over the last couple of weeks so WWE might as well do something with it and put it on the hands of someone who has so much massive momentum and moving into some other news and sticking with Wrestlemania and what exactly is going to be happening at that event for another certain champion which is Asuka and nothing is yet concrete but it was noted on the Wrestling Observer Radio that Asuka is rumored to be facing Lacey Evans at the Wrestlemania event for the championship WWE could of course go with another direction and she could even be included in a multi-woman match for Asuka's title but she is currently rumored to be part of this big Wrestlemania a match and some of you guys might be wondering why this is the case because it is very odd with so many people on the main roster that could definitely end up facing Asuka and all of this adds to the rumor that we have been discussing over the last couple of roundups indicating that WWE is getting ready to give Lacey Evans a massive push and this is why she making random appearances at the Elimination Chamber Monday Night Raw and Smackdown Live where although she's not doing much she's still being shown on television and to the crowd for a split 10 seconds where she just walks down the ramp and walks right back and to add to all of this Dave Meltzer on the wrestling observer ended up indicating the following in regards to Lacey Evans you have no idea how big they want Lacey Evans to be right now the idea is that you know when Ronda Rousey leaves whenever that will be the big three will be Charlotte Becky Lynch and Lacey Evans which you know is Charlotte 
shocking, but that's where they see things. They see her as someone they can promote mainstream because of what she's done in life, being a mother, all the different things in her background. They just see her as a big time star, a big time crossover star. She's like Roman Reigns in a lot of ways. So that is a big ship on Lacey Evans right now. And I'm honestly beyond surprised to even be hearing this because it seems like WWE just want to bring her all the way to the top and in a quickly fashion if she's going to be challenging for the title in the near future. And don't get me wrong, guys, I definitely see Lacey Evans being a top star. But I do feel like, you know, WWE has certain superstars on the main roster, like, for example, Nikki Cross, that could also be a great contender for Asuka if they book her correctly. So hopefully they take it slow with this Lacey Evans push and instead do it the right way and build towards it. Sticking with the women's division, and a bit of a spoiler, but not so much. So last night we ended up having the NXT tapings for the next three weeks or so. And in one of the episodes, we had Sasha Banks and Bayley making a surprise appearance, indicating that they wanted to share the love with NXT, which is where they came from. So they're going to be defending the titles in NXT in addition to Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live, which is obviously big news. Pretty much confirming the fact that these titles are going to be cross-branded, and I certainly love what they're doing with it. Moving into some other news, uh, so something that we have been talking a lot about is in regards to The Undertaker and now taking outside bookings out of the WWE. It came out of nowhere because we are talking about The Undertaker, who has been a WWE guy since day one. It became more of a shocker when it was announced that The Undertaker was going to be showing up and making an appearance at the StarCast 2 wrestling convention, which is affiliated and is happening during the AEW Double or Nothing event weekend. And now there's reports indicating that apparently Vince McMahon is actually unhappy with this whole situation because of course a taker appearance ultimately benefits the competition or elite wrestling so it's reasonable why Vince McMahon will be unhappy about all of this but I still feel like it's not such a big deal and JR ended up indicating the same thing during a recent interview where he indicated that people seem to be making this a bigger deal than what actually is because Undertaker is still contracted with the WWE and his outside booking is him making an extra dollar and things that he has already been doing. JR indicated how The Undertaker was already appearing in other conventions and making other special appearances outside of the WWE. So it's really not a big deal, it's just more out there in the public right now. Mostly because of his appearance at the StarCast event. The only way up to why I can see Vince McMahon being unhappy is that maybe he had no idea that one of those appearances was going to be for the StarCast event, a bit affiliated to AEW. But overall, I do feel like WWE ultimately is the one who approves his appearances, so there's a lot of contradicting factors at the moment. And the last piece of news that I got for you guys in this roundup is a follow-up to the NXT collabs that we ended up getting this week on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live. So the major discussion amongst the WWE Universe this week is the surprise appearances of these NXT main superstars showing up on Raw and SmackDown Live. We had NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa, former North American champion Johnny Gargano, Alistair Black and Ricochet all performing this week on both of the brands. And it turns out that the decision was made of course by Vince McMahon and what he was expecting from all of this was to try to improve the ratings and shake things up. The Wrestling Observer indicated how Vince felt that the reason the ratings are down is because the product is stale and that the current stars are stale. The end result was the debuting of these superstars and the focus that I want to bring on is to the ratings because rating for this week's Smackdown Live and Monday Night Raw actually ended up improving so much so that even Smackdown Live got the best rating for this year. So you know that that is huge and you know that Vince McMahon is paying attention to all of that. Now reports indicate that these guys are actually going to be sticking around on Smackdown Live and Monday Night Raw while being part of the NXT roster. So there is a lot of reasoning behind everything that we saw this week and it looks like they're going to continue it because there is no way Vince McMahon is not going to be impressed after the boost of the television ratings. As for Vince McMahon thinking that his current roster superstars is stale, it's ironic and a slap to their own face because they're the one who's booking these superstars to be stale. How am I supposed to get behind the reason 
recent collapse or anybody who has been in the roster for years now if you don't book them as good how are we supposed to get behind the ambrose for example where you just turned him heel two months ago and he was on top of everything then three weeks after that you're booking him to lose matches lose the title that he just won and now you switched him back to babyface and i understand that the ambrose is leaving so technically they don't have to have any type of direction with him but similar stuff like this is what they've been doing with the rest of the superstars so it's just hard to get behind them they become stale because of the way that they're writing them again that is a slap to their own face if they're the one who's writing the superstars and think that those superstars are stale and on some confirmed news as i was recording this roundup we ended up learning that roman reigns will be returning to monday night raw next week to give us an update on his battle with leukemia reign had to leave the wwe four months ago so it should be interesting to see what he's gonna tell us in regards to an update for his return but the fact that we are getting an update from him could potentially mean that it is good news and that we're gonna be seeing him return in the very near future. Reign of course had to relinquish the Universal Championship to focus on his battle and illness that had returned after 11 years of the initial diagnosis. Anyways guys that is what I got for you in this roundup episode. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below of any of the top stories that we ended up discussing today. If you haven't just yet to be fully up to date you already know to subscribe to the channel and to Turn on those notifications. We're in the road to 100,000 subscribers. Much to y'all. Dig it.